the rich text control would be bound to a rich text field in your domino form. This uses uh, a CK editor dojo widget uh, when it's displayed uh, in the web browser in the nose client. And so if you've worked with any rich text editors on the web, you know those have a toolbar at the top that controls the various options the user can do. And you can set whether you want a lot of options or a medium amount of options or a large would be all the options. And here's a picture of the way these different options will look. Uh, as you can see, slim is, is kind of just a, a small subset medium, uh, you start to get in some of the uh, extra controls to set up tables and things like that, and large has all the options. Okay, so let's go look at that, some of those options. So we have an X page here, uh, kind of similar to what you were looking at before, but we've added things like a computed field. So here's where we can compute the value by going to the value tab. And in this case we just bound it to uh, the sales rep field on the, um, the underlying data source. Then we also have a uh, rich text control at the bottom and so this is bound if I go to the data tab to a rich text field on our, on our underlying document one data source. And so when we go to preview this, we have our rich text control here and we can uh, use the uh, controls to set a different font as well as a different size and make things bold and italic. Uh, we can also do things like insert an image or insert a table or create a link. And we even have the little emoticons that we can add. Notice here the computed field uh, doesn't show right now, but that's based on the value in the region field. So if I select a region, that will then fill in the sales rep based on the region. Okay, if I go back to designer and go to my rich text control and go to the dojo tab, I can set the toolbar type by adding an attribute. And I'll just type in uh, tool our type, and let's set this to uh, slim, and then I'll save this and preview it again. Now notice that I have a minimal number of controls on my rich text control. Okay, and so then we also have uh, let's say if we um, want to add uh, a row here with uh, a date value, I can go over uh, to my table and let's say I want to add a row above this. I can right click on that table column and insert row above and I can add a label control. So we'll put that over here, and let's say that we want to call this uh, date um, started or something like that. And then we want to add a date value. So a date value, would, we would use the edit box control. There's also a date time picker, which basically is the same as an edit box control that is set to display a date and use the date time picker. And if I go to preview this, here's my date started field that I added, and I can use the date time picker to select the date, and that would be you know my new field that I added. 
Okay, so let's get into the uh, list boxes and combo boxes next. Uh, again, you know, you can drag those over from the controls palette or like Paul did when he initially dragged over those different fields from the data palette and got that dialog, he could choose whether he wanted a list box or combo box. Again, we have some common properties and there also is the option to allow multiple selections for a list box. Now, what the users see uh, this is kind of similar in Domino where you had that one properties tab in the info box for that field for checkboxes and list boxes and things like that. Uh, the user can see a certain label, but then a certain value gets stored in the underlying Domino document. In this case, if we chose the new lead label, what gets stored is only a one. So the way we can get those in there is we can type them in uh, one at a time. If you're converting a domino form, here's a tip, and that is if you go to your domino form to that particular field, you can copy the choices over. Now you can't paste them directly into the values tab that we had on this previous screen, uh, but what we can do is use this import list button. And that import list button will bring this dialog box up on the right side. And we can paste in our choices. However, there is a space there before and after the vertical bar that you will have to manually remove. Then we say we want to add a vertical bar as a custom separator. We click OK, and that will fill in all our choices. Now, many of you uh, don't like typing in all those choices. You would rather compute the values, and you do that typically using an at DB column, and go to a view and get all the columns or all the values in a particular column in the view. And you can do that using the at DB column function, just like you did in your notes form. The other way to do it, too, is to write some code that will return all those values from that particular view. And in this case, we use the schema tab to help write the code for us. Or as you get more proficient with server-side JavaScript, you just start typing in the code and use type ahead, and I'll show you how you do that. Uh, so here's an example of the at DB column. In this case, we are going to a different database, a different application. Uh, if this was in the same application, this particular view, the customer's by name view, we could just use the at function at db name, uh, and that will return the, the same application uh, that we're in. But since we want to go to a different application to get the data in that view from that other application, we have to set up an array with two elements. Uh, the first element in the array is the server, and in this case, we want to go to the same server, so we just use the empty quotes to signify that. The second member of the array is the path to the location of that other application. Now, this is JavaScript, so we have to double backslash our backslashes. And we use the, the new array function to, do, to create the array, and then pass that array in as the first parameter in the at db column. So server-side JavaScript, uh, or I should say at functions are JavaScript. Uh, so you've got to follow the JavaScript rules. You may have noticed that we have to use commas instead of semicolons for uh, separating our parameters. And it is case sensitive. So you've got to type in at db column uh, in proper case that. And we talked about the parameter for the database. We can use an empty string or at db name if we're going to the same application. Otherwise, we set up an array, like we're doing in this image here, to go to another application other than the current one where you're in. All right, let's go look at that in Designer. OK, so we have here. Uh, some combo uh, boxes and list boxes. In the first part, these are all static. So if we go uh, highlight one and go to the values tab, you see that we have 
a bunch of static values. And if I want to add another value, I use the add item. That puts in an untitled value. And then I double click on that and say, uh, some other value. And in this case, I'll give it a value of 6. And so the users will see you know, six, the, uh, some other value. If they choose that one, 6 is what gets stored. Or I can compute the value. So here we have a combo box. Now that this is computed, in the Values tab, I only see computed items at the bottom for my label and value. So I double click on that and I see that we have some code here that we're using to compute the values. So the way we got this code is first of all we had on this X page we had a view data source defined. So if I go to the X page properties using my outline view and go to the data tab you see that in addition to binding the data sources to a document, in this case the customer form, I am also have a view data source. Now we are not showing a view in this X page, there is no view control here, but I have a data source set up to a view. The reason I do this is because I want to use that data source in my combo box. So again I go to the values tab and edit the JavaScript code and we are referencing the name of the data source and then we have a method called get column values and we are getting the first column in that view. So how do we get this when we are a new JavaScript programmer? We have no idea uh, how to remember get column values. Well I can go over to the schema tab and I can choose my view data source. So you hear, see here are my different columns in the view. I can right click on any one. It doesn't really matter because we're really just working on the view itself. And we want to get a column of data from the view. So I just choose that option, get column values. That's all I have to do now is stick in the column number I want to get. In this case, the first column, which is zero referenced. And click OK. And that's all we got to do. Um, another way to get that is let me add a uh, to our table here. I'll append a row, and let's say we want to get a uh, list box, and uh, this is my list box here. And first, let me switch over to the views and show you a view that I want to get. So there's a view called US States. In this view, we have an abbreviation in the first column, and our second column is the state name. So what I want to show in this X page is a list box that has the different state names. So let me go back to that list box I was creating. I'll go to the Values tab, and now I'm going to say Add Formula Item. Okay, so now I want to do the at db column. So I just start typing in at db and hit the, uh, the control space bar. I'll get type ahead and that will give me the at db column and I can just double click on that and it will automatically fill that in for me. So remember our first parameter is the, the database name. Uh, I can use the at db name since I am going to this current application. I'll use the type ahead again. The second parameter is the name of the view. That was US states. And the third parameter is the column I want. That was the second column. Uh, using the at db column, this is the same format as the uh, notes at db column. Thank you.